This is an iWatts with DS6121 uh, scope, circa 1980. Um, we use these at, uh, well, we still use these at work up to about five or six years ago. Um, I've been working there nearly 20 years now, and I remember working with these scopes back in certainly in the 90s. Um, we bought about four or five of them, um, and they've all been very reliable, apart from one that failed with a, uh, a problem with its uh, storage uh, uh, feature. But um, even though it says it's a digital storage scope, it's actually a full analog scope as well. It's um, the storage section it can be actually selected. So normally, in normal operation, it's an analog scope. Um, and we, s we scrapped the four about four or five years ago. Um, and this one's been hidden away in one of the uh, storage rooms because I thought well, I'll uh, take it home and uh, rather than get it scrapped, we'll have a go and see if, see if I can make any use of it. Um, it's got these sort of like this membrane keypad on it. Um, it's quite intuitive and it's quite nice and easy to use. Um, I think this particular model hasn't seen a lot of use actually, um, but I, I can't be sure. I think this was actually in our calibration department and therefore hasn't been used an awful lot. Um, I'll power it up um, and just run through if I can remember how it works and uh, we'll just go through it and all and then see if it's a viable replacement for the uh, tectronics I use normally and the main thing will be is how much RFI it produces. Of course I've got the Hewlett Packard digital scope but uh, I tend to use that for sort of other things other than radio because it does tend to generate quite a lot of radio interference uh, from its microprocessor and I, I expect this to probably do a similar produce the same sort of radio interference as well so let's power it up and uh, now it's, if this is the one that's been stored in the uh, used in the calibration department this should be a nice um, clean clean display. Now I think this checksum on the uh, ROM checksum is, I think that's a fail and I need to, to verify that but as you can see it's got a really pale, bright CRT um, and then you can see the display is nice and sharp. Um, it's got the, um, what it has got which hasn't, the, uh, the, the uh, Tektronix hasn't as it has got guides for uh, uh, cursor uh, markers and things like that so you can actually measure frequencies and things. So uh, let's connect it up to the uh, Marconi quickly and see if it still works okay. Now we'll generate, a, this is a 10.7 meg, let's turn that on. We'll turn off channel one, this is your mode select here, so we'll get off channel one only. And you can see we've got a modulated frequency. Uh, let's turn the modulation off, so FM is to off, and you can see that's clean that up. There's a bit of a twist in the, on the uh, trace, and there's also something that looks like the left-hand side of the CRT is slightly dimmer to the right as it sweeps across. Not too worried about that at the moment. We'll just see what the display is like. So I'll just bring the screen rotation into centre. It probably needs a degauss, but there we go. That straightens that out. Now, I'll give you a quick run-through. These are all the cursor controls for controlling the cursor menu. And the menus are done through these uh, uh, push buttons here. And I don't know if you can see this, I'll turn the uh, intensity down so you can see this. There's the measure by cursor, set up recall, and various things you can do um, to uh, m for measuring, which is a nice feature on a, on a scope like this. Um, I'll turn that up down so you... So there's our, uh, there's our, our uh, sweep, we're running at, um, what's our time base at the moment? So we're running at uh, one millisecond. So Basically, this is trigger all the trigger controls. This is your source. I'm triggering on channel one. Um, that's our trigger level, and it's. I seem to remember trigger was done by ALT. So if you select trigger and then adjust the level, it will say alt. And I think it means altitude above, above the waveform. But I'll come to that in a minute. I haven't used this for a while, so I, it needs a need to sort of refresh myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to couple in DC, and that's not working. Uh, so what am I doing wrong? Source is channel one. Ah, oh, I've got the freeze on it. It actually looks like the CPU's locked up because I've got. Yep, the CPU has actually locked up. So I'm going to reboot the thing again. Oh, is it because I've got the guys on? 
There we go, maybe that's it. It's because, sorry, so long since I've used one of these, that's because I had the uh, cursors on it, it just locks the front panel up, which is fair enough. So, what I'm going to do is try and uh, increase the time base. This is that time base here. There we go. Got a nice, clean, sharp waveform. Really, really good CRT on this. Um, and then our trigger level is here, and it, as I say, is the out. Yeah. That's been negative. And we're actually AC couple at the moment, so if we DC couple and bring our position down. So there's a 0 volt point here, and then our trigger level below 0, that's above 0 volts, and then it was below 0 volts, and you can see that the relative position of the trace relative to where I'm triggering on the scope. So that works okay. We've got channel 2, external trigger, which uh, is this input here, nominal trigger, line trigger, where it tr triggers off the line frequency. And on channel B, you've got run after delay and all those sort of things that I never use anyway. Um, you've got slope, positive and negative slope, so it triggers on the positive going or the negative going on the slope. Um, now, data position, um, I think that's only in the storage mode, and the storage basically means it will it, it shifts the, the the data is started from the center point of the screen to the to the left or the right, so post or or pre, so so pre and post, so before the, the waveform, before the center line and after the center line. Um, horizontal mode, um, I'm not entirely sure what this is, is but A intensity, B delayed, uh, there's various different modes and you've got of course you've got the XY for uh, this is just lines and things like that. We're running in sweep mode at the moment in automatic mode, we've got normal, and you've got single, you could do a single sweep, and I think you just press a single sweep and it will just do a one sweep of the waveform. Bandwidth limiter is here, it limits it to 20 megahertz, and as you can see, because we're at 10 megahertz, it drops the frequency of the waveform off slightly. Um, what else have we got? We've got hold off adjustment, uh, normal normal sort of thing with the hold up, hold off, same as an analog scope with the hold off adjustment. Uh, we've done the coupling, and there's the source. You've got your uh, grounding point here on the uh, vertical amplifier, so that's grounded DC or AC. Um, you've got you can go uncal on the on the on the variable. I think that's if you keep going down it and hold it down, it will go to uncalibrate. I think it's so long, as I say, since I've used this, but there was a way you could turn on the so you could use it as like a vernier adjustment. Um, I can't remember how you do that now. I'm, it's probably second function actually. Yeah, there we go on Cal. So the second function basically gives you the second options of the uh, all, all these uh, all these controls. Uh, turn the un turn that off. We don't we don't want that. No, I can't turn it off now. Okay, there we go. It's off now. So it looks like the scope's working absolutely fine on channel one. Let's try it on channel two. Select channel two. Uh, of course, now we need to change trigger to channel two, and it's triggering on channel two fine. Uh, AC coupled. Uh, we have got a, sorry AC and DC here. High frequency reject. Um, no, there we go. HF reject. A bit sluggish. This control. I think it's all a bit damp. This has been sitting in the car and probably hasn't been used for so long. It needs a bit of chance to sort of get going again. So you've got yeah HF reject, F reject, TV vertical, and various other ones. TV horizontal different different sort of facilities really for TV repair and stuff like that. Um, now we've got the, uh, let's go to storage mode and this will be interesting because we never use these scopes in storage, we always use them in analogue because the, what, what, the stuff we work with is just not necessary. So turn on storage and straight away you can see um, there's a problem with the scope. I don't think, I think there is, the chap who knew about these scopes said he thought that, that checksum was uh, perfectly okay but clearly it's not there's a probably something wrong with the uh, a, a d to a converter and as you can see there's no interpolation it's just a sort of like a raw a raw signal um, and that certainly doesn't look right and that that would explain why probably this one was written off um, but to be honest with you as I say that doesn't bother me that much um, it's got all the normal features of the freeze for a, a digital scope um, 
but you've got to bear in mind this is a very early digital scope and its performance was pretty poor anyway um, but it looks like the set's okay um, there's a, let me just run you through the cursor so we we'll take it back out of storage increase the time base so we'll go measure by cursors and we want frequency so if we go um, where are we so we want time so it's free there we go and then you just move the position with the cursor one as you can see like that and then cursor two and there you go it's saying 10.5 but of course this is only a guide 10.7 megahertz and 93 nanoseconds um, let's have a look at this as well we've got uh, measure by cursors uh, voltage that's delta voltage so we want uh, let's yeah let's have delta voltage that's um, and you've got the cursors to down there we go and that's 315 millivolts now I'm not sure if that's RMS or peak to peak what are we on we're on volts per division at the moment we're on 200 millivolts um, peak to peak so that's obviously our that's an RMS value uh, what else we got we've got setup and recalls from that uh, for obviously like the normal digital scope so you can recall the setup I don't think there's got any in here let's just let's see if we can recall something uh, so recall one setup one <laughs> looks like it's all actually got something stored in uh, one of the uh, channels which is amazing after the time it's been sitting in the uh, in the workshop and not doing anything at all our waveform back again. Yes, this this uh, I think this is a problem with the uh, calibration of the CRT, where it's not uh, giving a good trace at the beginning of the uh, waveform. Just try the position of the uh, uh, waveform. You can actually shift the trace left to right, uh, and that should show up on here somewhere. I can't remember how to do this. Um, we've got a whole lot of source data, trace separation, delay time variable. That's your time base. I can't remember. I'm sure there's a way you can shift it left to right. It's, there it is, is it? That's why. See, it's right. So if I get it central, increase the time base. Is that better? Yeah, it's more uniform across the trace now. It's it's certainly brighter than it was, but it, I'm not I'm not sure that's that's absolutely perfect. So it looks like this is probably be okay. The, the the true test, I suppose, is to get a medium wave radio next and see what it interferes like. And it's good. It's very good. It's you can hear it's long wave. It's producing very little RFI. So I think that will probably end up replacing the uh, the um, old H. Uh, the old Tektronix I'm using at the moment that's a great little um, scope and it'll be a brilliant backup because it's um, it's very easy to use but uh, this has got the, the, the measurement facilities on it um, and it's also got probably got better performance at higher frequency let's just try it at a hundred meg um, now the uh, Tektronix is supposed to work at hundred meg um, but it's it's pretty poor after about 50 60 meg most of the time that's not a problem for me so let's just have a look see how this performs at, and that is miles miles sharper image than I'll ever get with that scope uh, so that goes to show this is a actually a great little scope um, and I think I'm going to probably end up using this uh, for uh, doing all my radios from now on and I'll take this out of service and put it in the loft and it's there if and when this one finally fails so I hope this is fairly interesting. Um, there's a times 10 meg there, so really 10, 100 megs is no problem at all for this scope. I hope this is interesting, um, and hopefully you'll see this uh, scope in action a bit more in the future. Thanks for watching.